Okay. Well, I love Acropolis, and I'm happy to be here casting this game. We've got low elo legends. I love their elos. 678 versus 687. And we've got Argon Grohl here in the red, playing as the Berbers, which I consider to be a great civilization on this map. We'll talk about why. And then in the blue, we have the Byzantines for Mario Todera, Tordera, excuse me, 97. I was playing as the Byzantines, and I do very much like the Byzantines for this map as well. Again, we'll talk a little bit about why. Um, on this map, you start up on a hill, or you start, um, I guess you could call it a hill. Some might call it a mountain, and there's kind of a rocky face that you have to scale down to get to other areas of the map. And the whole point of this map is pretty much expansion. Uh, any wood that's on the top of the hill is not going to last you very long, so you'll want to take the thicker wood lines. Uh, and while the water is very much unimportant on this map, the rest of the area and the flat bottom is. Uh, stone, gold, wood, everything down there you'll need. So that's a tough task, right? Because you are sending villagers a pretty long distance and down a hill to access a resource. And what that means is it keeps you... Uh, your villagers are very exposed, right? If you were to have villagers here and then an army were to show up and you need to go to safety, you have to run up that hill. And then the army is just going to get on top of it and kind of box you out from it. So it is a fairly aggressive map. But the other thing about this map is that you tend to be pretty far away from the opponent because you're almost always up against the edge of the map. And in situations where you're not like close to the map, it's it's like blue situation where it's further than your opponent and there's this weird buggy rock terrain in the back. But still, it's the same situation. So Yeah, Byzantines are good because Byzantines Well, Byzantines in general, I think, are just a great like Castle H onward civilization. Um, but I like Byzantines because they can pretty much counter any type of civilization. So if you're up against an archer civilization, boom, you can make skirms. If you're up against a knight civilization, boom, you can make camels. And all those things are very cheap. But also, I think an underrated aspect of this map with Byzantines later on is free town watch. So you'll just be able to see so many different things. And you're going to need to because, again, this map isn't too easy to play. Um, what do the hills do? Do they give advantages or disadvantage? Uh, if you're on top of a hill, you do 25% more damage, and you receive 25% less damage. So that's a pretty big swing. Hey, we've got the classic mill wall here for red. I, this must be intentional, right? Three houses and then the mill all touching. And that's the other thing about this map as well. You cannot wall on this terrain. It's always weird. You can wall on part of it, like maybe two tiles of it, but the rest it won't let you wall on. So if you're going to wall, you kind of have to make an arena at the top of the hill. But then, again, your villagers are going to need to leave as well. So it's not... Uh, it's an awkward map to play, but I, I like the map because it just brings so many different things to the game. There's so many different ideas that you could try and execute on. Yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. Oh yeah, Berber villagers are faster. I wanted to talk about why I like the Berbers. And Berbers have great stable units. So having to leave your base to go to a faraway resource with faster villagers isn't as big of an issue. And then also having cheap stable units is awesome on a map where stable units are probably the most used uh, unit. You could go archers here, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest it if you're picking civilizations and trying to pick your strats. All right. So it looks like Red has scouted virtually everything here. Very thorough scouting from Red, especially for this elo. Red's going to find the water in the middle. Again, I wouldn't suggest docking here unless you want to be really crazy and go for fish traps or something. But you could. It's an option. Blue, I've noticed, has had a lot on wood this game. Has eight on wood right now. It was able to afford all the houses, afford the mill for the berries, also afford the barracks. Blue scouting is also pretty good. Seems to have forgotten about it for the time being, but again, 678 ELO. Not going to be perfect execution when it comes to everything, but just enough where we can still see a competitive match and obviously be entertained. Oh, cool. But like, this ELO would have been 900 ELO back when I started this series three years ago, right? Like, there's so many more players now. People know so much more about the game now. 
like many people who are listening and watching now, of course, have you know received all this knowledge, all this experience. So I think if you really want like the five or six minutes of TC Idle Time games, at least in Dark Age, uh, you, we probably have to go all the way down to like 300 ELO these days. And those players do exist, but uh, they're harder to find. <laughs> so, let's we'll see if Red wants to click up here and what Red wants to do. Also, I'm wondering if at this ELO you can get away with Fast Castle. I definitely know like players all the way up to 800 ELO will just go Fast Castle. Sometimes they get rushed in Feudal Age and they die. Other times they get to Castle Age and they're able to uh, survive. Do we know why Rex are broken? Um, oof. Should I rant about that? I'm actually going to make a video about that this week. Uh, not just the fact that Rex are broken, but the fact that websites the community has been using for years are broken and why that is and how un ineffective some of the tools that they provide us with to get data or watch recorded games, etc. Uh, are. But yeah, basically, um... I don't know why Rex are broken, but the re most recent update breaks some Rex occasionally. And that has been the case ever since the update came out. And there has been no fix for it. And I think they will push a fix for it at, at some point, right? But the fact that it has lasted for so long on top of some other things, and there's also been no communication on that, is quite poor, I think. But, you know, I am a guy who talks a lot, uh, and I... I try and communicate as much as possible, so maybe we just have different standards when it comes to that. What's Mario gonna do here? Obviously, it really affects me too, right? Because, like, <laughs> I, I cast games, I use recorded games a lot, so it, it's definitely something that might affect me more than the average guy. But Mario definitely wants to house wall. So there you go. This villager maybe is going to make... Oh, if I had to guess, I'd say this villager is going to make the next military building. So whatever's going to be after the barracks. Lots of farms for Mario. Holy, okay. And then we've got a stable and a blacksmith for red. Which could indicate a fast castle of some kind. The research shows that AW2 players are better at luring boars than girls. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I don't know what research you've done. Speak for yourself. <laughs> it's a common gamer thing, right? And people like to think. I don't know, dude. A tower. Ooh, okay. A tower. So this is um, this is blue thinking I really need to protect this area. And I'm very vulnerable here. I don't love the tower position. I feel like... You know, a tower here, tower here would be a little better. But I like the idea from Blue. And again, I love the fact that you get Town Watch for free at this point in the game. So Blue can see a lot. Now, Red's going Fast Castle here, guys. So uh, it's not a perfect build order because Red is idling the town center right now and not producing any villagers. But Red has the buildings... Red's going to drop off the food now. Red's going to click up to Castle Age. And Blue could have some big problems here. Now, the long-term problems for Red would be, can you afford to make many knights? Will your economy be very good because you currently have zero farms? So what I'd like to see from someone like Red here is to get horse collar and farm a lot. Not seeing that at the moment, but Red's going to place a mill in the middle to take some of the random deer around the pond. Okay, <laughs> Blue's auto scout just passes it. I believe that is auto scout for Blue because I can't click it, man. It's dodging me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way it's scouted seems like auto scout. Blue's no rush to find the enemy. Blue's going to take this wood line as well. It's going to take that gold. And it's just kind of casually building up towards Castle Age. But the so Blue has been very casual and relaxed in terms of having a plan to get to the next age but what blue has done an incredible job of is producing out of the town center eco upgrades are also flying in look at that food count so the way this game is shaping up as what red is even taking the shore fish is like 
you know, red's gonna try and do damage with knights. The red's economy probably won't be as good in the long run here. But even, like, two or three knights, it could kill all these villagers, right? Like, I feel like it could be a really effective strategy. Hmm. How many times have you gotten a girlfriend versus how many times... How many boars have you lured? All right. That's... That's a... That... That's fair. <laughs> a town center in the middle now on the on the water. What in the world? Red is really interesting. Now, from Blue's perspective, one thing you should always aim to try and do is find the opponent and see if they have military buildings. Right? But then again, like, if Blue were to take my advice and see the stable, Blue would be like, oh my god, my opponent's going to make knights and make a bunch of spearmen. But guess what? Red's not making any knights. <laughs> Red's not making any knights. And Red's getting fletching, which is a ranged upgrade, which would apply to, I guess, the town center here. So this is... Red's confusing me a little bit. Red did scout some of Blue's base, though, so Red would know where to go. But okay, so there's three town center boom, we'll call it, for Argon here, who's definitely switched gears. All right. Here's Blue's auto scout. Just gonna stroll into town. Blue, I would love it if you could make it to Castle Age. Also, it's interesting. Blue really likes to make the mining camps two tiles away from the Golden Stone instead of one tile away. There's very efficient lumber camps, but not so efficient mining camps. Holy food count, though. Can we look at this right now? Look at that. 4,300 food collected. Blue's collected more resources. But red could catch up with Vils. And so I think this could even out. We have ourselves a very close game. Hmm. Wild boars became extinct here a long while ago after too many lorings. Yes, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You know, speaking of maybe, I think there's a very good chance that a red player wants to go for camel archers. Has five on stone next to this town center. Getting the stone mining upgrade. And... Research Fletching, which again is a ranged upgrade. And I love the Camel Archer, so I'll be excited to see some of those. There's the market for Blue. Blue still can't go up to Castle Age. You need a second building. Mario's so chill, man. Mario's probably trying to click up. It's like, what? I still can't do it. Made another tower here just for protection. Okay, Mario. There we go. There's the blacksmith. So what was the castle age for red? What was the time? 1718. That's pretty impressive. It's going to be like 25 minutes for blue. But blue's going to have resources to go imp right away. That's the wild thing. And because blue has kept that one town center producing so frequently, the vill count might end up being even. I don't know if it's like you know, the caffeine right now or what. But guys, isn't that crazy? Like, this game is incredible. The fact that the Vill count's going to be pretty much dead even with two very different builds is exciting to me. Also shows the importance of farming and keeping your villagers producing out of your town centers. A fourth town center now for Argon. Argon says, I'm not finished. Here comes the scout. And I, I don't even think Blue's paying attention to this, honestly. Blue probably hasn't looked at it once. Which is why Blue's been able to be so effective with so many other aspects of the play. Town Center gets garrisoned. That's just Auto Scout Micro, but Auto Scout Micro's away. No problem. I mean, it had just had a camel created here by Red. Hmm. Chat's been weird today. <laughs> Y'all have been weird today. <laughs> I say that. I say that in the nicest way. But I love you. I'm weird too. Not as weird. At least not as the things are being right now. But it's all cool. Also, small little tip for this map. Is the corners tend to have a little bit of extra hunt. Actually, that's a horrible tip. But I meant like the corner adjacent to your base. This is, this is a common trend where there's like two or three deer. Not that you would necessarily want to run out there to mill, but... See, what did I say? 25 minutes? Yeah, it'll be 25-25 for Blue's Castle Age time. 
and it'll be 46 villagers versus 37. I think Blue's going to drop a castle here. Does Blue know there's a town center that... Uh, who's going to tell him? <laughs> uh, okay, well, Red now garrisons. <laughs> Great awareness from Red. Blue, you might want to cancel that one. <laughs> hey, Mario. <laughs> There's a town center there, and they're shooting you right now. Okay, well, that's not good. Castle gets denied in 30%. <laughs> Uh, I think Red will actually drop a castle here immediately after. I think Red's probably like, I need stone, I need stone, I need stone. And, I mean, it would make sense to me. Blue, did you notice that? Do you have any clue that happened? Mario puts too much focus on the economy. Are you good? Is the 97 in your name? Is that for the percentage of time and focus you put onto your economy? So 3% of the time you look at other things? Is that what that is? Because I thought 97 was your birth year. But now I'm having second thoughts. All right. I'm just going to let it sit there. That's fine. All right. That's cool. Um, ballistics now for red. He might be playing without sounds. I don't know. It's hard to say. I played without sound before. It's not easy. Blue placed a monastery and a university. So, like, knows of stuff like castles, monastery, university, all great things to get in order to go up to him. And now Blue's going to get light cab and it's going to make a bunch of scouts. Not too sure about that one there. But the thing about Byzantines is you don't necessarily have to have a plan because you can kind of do everything. <laughs> 97 is his age. I'm pretty sure it's probably his birth year, right? I think we're looking at first name, last name, and then uh, birth year. But I could be wrong. Great job from Blue, though. Blue's like, if I take out this castle, or even if I deny this castle, I can hold the middle where there's a lot of gold and wood. Um, so I'm impressed with that. Also, making a little bit more army is also good. I thought Blue was just going to not do that at all. Also, Red is getting relics. Red's about to have two relics, so the longer this game goes, the better it looks for him. I mean, Blue has had all the time in the world to be able to, to stop that. Actually, wait, Blue can't see what's attacking it. I always forget about that detail, because you have no vision off of your foundation. And if, he, if Blue wasn't paying attention, Blue might not know what killed the villagers earlier. In fact, it was the TC, so... Castle on the hill here for red. I don't love this spot. I'd say I prefer this because it's where your golden stone is, but that's fine. Castle on the hill is good. Blue's still making light cav. Blue can make another castle. So there is that. And blue is clicked up to imp after this too. Blue's still in this game. One minute of TC idle time. Versus 40 minutes. Now, to be fair to Red, that's because Red has four TCs. But still, normally the player who adds the town center is going to have more villagers, but not if you can't keep them producing all the time. Also, this will be 650 stone down the drain if Blue doesn't delete this. I always get the colors wrong. Like, if I'm not saying player names, one out of every 10 times I talk about players, I get the colors wrong. I, I don't know what it is with my brain. Because I'll look at, at blue and be like, yeah, red's got light calf. I, I don't know why I am the way I am. Is he going to drop it like right here? <laughs> Maybe he doesn't know. He's clearly waiting. He got murder holes. <laughs> I hope he drops it right here. It'd be so funny, man. I think he's going to go in and fight and then try and finish it. But like have oh 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 oh. Well, did Red click the castle? Oh. <gasps> okay, now Red's clicked the units. Okay, Red will clear up this fight no problem. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so Blue realizes it's a nope. 
Now what will Blue do? You could just make barracks, and then you could make pikemen, which is a perfect counter to camels, especially if you're Byzantines. But Blue's like, you know what? We don't need that castle. You can take it out. I won't even delete it. I'm going to make a castle here. Can he hear the swords banning, banning the castle? No, you can't. It's weird, to be honest, because like I don't encounter the situation a lot. I almost don't feel like that this is the situation, because I thought that you would see the camels if they're attacking your foundation, but I guess not. Okay. Also, I don't know if Blue knows you can delete stuff. I think that's very possible. What does Blue want to make? Blue's made it to Imp. Blue still has the villager lead. But that's all going to change, I think. Because Red is slowly catching up. Uh, did Red click up to Imp? Yeah, he did. Behind the villager. Okay, that makes sense. That's where the food went. Alright. We have Imp armor now for the Cav for Mario. We have Camel Archers on the way for Red. And we'll have Ballistics. And we're just watching these camels slowly take out that foundation. How do katas do against camels? Good question. I think... I think camels don't have bonus damage against katas. But they still trade cost effectively. I think that's what it is. But I honestly am not 100% on that. Obviously making too many camels against Byzantines is normally a risk because of the cheap pikemen Byzantines have. I think the thing is, is like heavy camel has so, it's so much easier to get than elite cataphract. So I think with that being a factor, I think that heavy camel is still fine against cataphract, but yeah, there's no bonus damage. Blue loves technologies. Blue had ballistics already and murder holes. Look at all the blacksmith upgrades, even treadmill crane, crop rotation. Two man saw. Again, this all the stone's gonna go down. Blue's just gonna lose this castle. Cost effective against generic camels. Gotcha. Well, guys, never like. I don't think you should think let's go camels against cataphracts though, just because of the other options Byzantines have. It gets very tricky in late game against Byzantine. But say goodbye to your stone here, Blue. Uh, lesson learned, I suppose, or not. And the foundation's just going to disappear. As we see Logistica. So there's trample damage for the two cataphracts that are eventually going to be on the way. <laughs> oh, man. I love Blue. Like, Blue is a relaxed gamer, man. Blue is chill. Okay, there's the tech. Now more cataphracts. Well, Blue does have full armor. So that's awesome. I wonder if Blue sees any extra stone. Yeah, it does see that. It does see that. Should probably consider it. Like, Red, funnily enough, the issue there could be the technologies. No Bodkin Arrow yet. I don't think Thumb Ring's in yet. Chemistry. All the upgrades you need for Camel Archers. Also, not too much on stone for Red either. Actually, not a ton of stone on this map, I guess, at the top. You only get four tiles, I think. Hmm. And Blue scouted virtually everything. Blue also mining some stone here, taking some gold. Still making cataphracts. Now, this is what I'd suggest for either player, in particular red, is just send one unit and set waypoints through your opponent's base and just see if you could find anything. He's just continuing to make camels for the time being. At least the camels, I mean, he doesn't have heavy camel, but he's got chain barding, he's got forging. And I think camels should beat katas if the katas aren't elite. If they're elite with Logistica, it's a very different story. Uh, I used to want to get full upgrades before making units. The idea was to make the units as strong as possible before losing them. Well, there was a point when I started that I didn't think, I thought that if I didn't have the upgrades in, when a unit was created, they wouldn't get the upgrades. I thought that as a noob for a while. And then I realized, oh, I can get upgrades after I created the unit. Relaxed gamer. 
But blue is blue's pretty good. Now, blue has stopped producing villas. But a lot of people do with this elo at around 60 villagers and an imp. But that castle's producing, man. And look at red. Red's getting techs now. Making villagers, but not really producing a lot of camels. It does clean up the light cab there, though, and saves that camel's life. But we see heavy camel. And it's still got to be worth it because of the HP increase. You have so many camels already. No, we see elite camel archer. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's one of your go-to units with the Berbers in late game if you can get there. Oh, man. Blue is ready. I actually think blue could afford elite cataphract as well off one town center economy. I think the only thing blue won't have upgrade wise if blue gets a lead cataphract would be husbandry does anyone remember if husbandry was researched earlier mm, i forget i think elite cataphract is made cheaper within the last year it used to be like 1600 food 1200 gold but he just clicked it how many resources did he have when he clicked it hold on mm, okay so it's 1200 food now and how much gold? Where's this gold? What? Hold on. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have done this. This is stupid. But anyways, uh, boom, clicked it. Lost like a thousand gold, maybe eight hundred. So yeah, he'll have elite cataphract after he has two trebuchets out, and he's gonna see all of this from red, which is all very exposed. Red is making the elite camel archers though, and red's got the camels here protecting this stone. Interesting. 1200 800 is what it is now yeah i think i forget if they made logistica cheaper but you know, having two unique techs that applies to one unit is fairly rare and it is obviously very pricey it's not just the cost of the units and the upgrades but it's also the fact that you need to get unique techs out of a building that you also want to produce out of so it's very rare that you get fully upgraded elite cataphracts heavy camo on the way for red Red placing some some buildings around the top of the hill. I like that touch. Red. I think it's going to be overchopped, but still. This is the most important area of your economy still if you're red. There's elite cataphract. Even hoardings. Man, Mario, say what you want about Mario. But Mario knows the technologies, man. Loves to research technologies. Hoardings on a Byzantine castle is insane as well. Because they already have 6,700 HP. It goes up to like 8,000 HP, I think. I forget what Hoardings does. It's only in community games I ever see that. No one at a high level ever prioritizes that. Mm. Oh, Camels are attacking over here. So the Cataphracts are coming over to deal with this. Camels aren't the best raiding unit, but it is still something. This is actually going to end up being good for Red because Red will get to find out what his opponent's making. And it's the first real raid we've seen in this game. Good clear up. Cataphracts will come in now. Boom. Cataphracts, obviously just with pure numbers, will win this. Trample damage helps a little bit in the choke point as well. There you go. Elite Cataphracts, 150 HP, 12 plus 2 attack. Very hard to counter this unit unless you have a lot of ranged units. Hi, T90. Uh, you might have to answer this a million times, but I think I have a good Dark slash Feudal Age game, can fast castle, etc. Once I hit Castle Age, I don't know what to do, and if I win the fight, I don't know how to close the game. Any advice? Commit towards a unit? Commit your upgrades to it while adding economy. So, you want Scout Rush? Maybe go Knights? Get upgrades? Add Eco. And just, just commit. Commit and adapt, commit and adapt, commit and adapt. The worst thing you can do is get Castle Age and just drop Town Centers and not commit towards an army because then you'll just get stuck and you'll be like, oh god, what do I do? Commit towards an army while doing the other things would be my advice. I don't know if that'll help or not. Also, healing up the Cataphracts after that fight. I love Blue, man. It's very satisfying watching Blue, who just got housed and is now going to make a line of houses across the middle. Everything's very deliberate with this player. 
very, very deliberate, but also has given Red a lot of time, and now we get to see Magrabi camels, which means the camels heal up over time. That would apply to the camel archers as well. 8,000 HP for the castle, though. I was right. Only thing I'd say here, Blue, is you are trickle trebbing. Showing up with four means this castle will go down. Showing up with two gives Red an opportunity to repair and fight you back. Let's see if Red can get those trebs or not and see how much Blue commits. Blue's waiting. Blue's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The camels have looped around. I think Red is trying to, to draw the cataphracts out of position. And Red surrounds here with the camels. Really good engagement, I think. It's like the best engagement he'll get. But the cataphracts don't care, man. Cataphracts don't seem to care at all. They're taking a pretty good fight considering they're underneath the castle. They're up against camel archers and also heavy camels. Wow, man. Wow, incoming question from Red in my chat. It's like, hey, T90, I really like the Berbers, but every time I'm up against the Byzantines, I die to cataphracts. Do you have any tips? Because, wow. Dang, they shredded there. And so the castle will end up going down. And Blue's still got more cataphracts on the way. And watch this. He's going to get back to his monks here. And Blue's going to heal up a little bit. And that's going to bring him about 600 more HP as well, who does that. Thank you while adapting sometimes. I feel that I'm wasting resources having to switch from, let's say, Knight to Archer. Doing all the upgrades makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. Hmm. Well, so, I, uh, you would also need to tell me your ELO, right? So, if you're like 600, my advice would be different if you're 1300. But I can tell you that there's, there's definitely a point where tech switching is needed but up to like i truly feel that up to like 1300 at least maybe even more but let's just say 1300 elo just simply committing to one unit like let's say knights committing full upgrades and just committing to numbers 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 could get you a really long way because a lot of people when they try and switch like let's say your opponent goes pikeman right and you've got um you know, 15 knights and you see pikemen. A lot of people are going to try and switch. And while they're switching, they're not making any more knights. Their opponent takes map control. But sometimes, if you just like... It sounds stupid, but if you just make like 15 more knights and get one more upgrade, you can actually clear the pikemen and continue to push. And then it doesn't take as much time. I don't know if that made sense. But here's, here's the other thing that I think is really important, and I'm going to make a video about this, so this is kind of like a sneak preview for the video I eventually make. Blue's making a bunch of heavy camels, by the way. We'll actually get to see the fight, guys. We'll get to see how elite cataphracts do against heavy camel in an actual battle. This would be sick. Um, Siege and Monk is like your great equalizer. So, like, if you're... It, it, Siege and Monk does a great job at making the composition you're already doing better against counters. So let's say you're going infantry and then your opponent adds a lot of archers. One or two mangonels and then suddenly those archers aren't as big of an issue. Uh, if you're going knights and they're going pikemen, a couple scorpions doesn't make that as much of an issue, you know? So it, it, trying to use those things is complicated and here we have the fight. Yeah, guys, I think the fact that heavy camels are cheaper because you don't need so many upgrades and the fact you can produce the amount of staples makes them a really good play here still actually wait a second <laughs> what wait a second oh my god the cataphracts were heavily outnumbered there what <laughs> what i take it back <laughs> elite cataphracts own camels whoa Wow, and that's awkward for Red, too, because if Red tries to go Pikeman, Pikeman's even worse, I think. Dang. This is sick. This is also one castle production, too, right? Like, it's not like he's had multiple castles producing. It's just one. He lost the other one. He's in no rush to make the next one. I expected Red to win there. He had full upgrades. Well, the sad thing for Red is that I think the key for him was going to be Elite Camel Archer, and he hasn't really been committing towards that. A hard unit to micro, obviously. He did have a group that died and has kind of forgotten about it since. Yeah, Logistica is definitely in here, so. 
Yeah, 290, but at 900 elo, we can't really manage monks. Well, 900 elo, it's more for getting relics and healing. But I guess, you know, the, the point about Siege. At 900 elo, I think Siege could be a lot more useful. But again, how frequently do you see games where it's just like players need to commit more when I'm casting? Like right now, it's not even a conversation of units. It's simply spend your freaking resources, right? That's such a big aspect of this game. Resources. Drop castles. Make camel archers. Resources. Drop castles. Make cataphracts. So sometimes people do get caught up in the tech switches when they could have just made more. <laughs> as mindless as that sounds. It's a good game though. Like I think red with three relics. Red with the additional stone here. Getting some of the gold here. Could do a really good job. Oh my god. <laughs> Blue. I mean, you gotta love this from Blue. Blue is a true Byzantine player. Look at this line of houses. All the way towards this one castle. And this is the most important castle. Because it's the only castle. And it has 8,000 HP. So Blue says, if I get the house walls down... Then I could just focus all my attention here. 8,000 gold as well. That's insane. It's the value, man. Red does have pikes. So pikes do still do a little bit of bonus damage against Katas, right? So is pikes better than camel against cataphracts? I guess it might actually be. Plus you'll have the hill here. Plus you'll have some camel archers. Okay, if the Cataphracts win this, I'll eat my shoe. There's no way the Cataphracts win this. Great job from Red. Massive army count. The cataphracts aren't melting quite as quickly as I'd expect. But Remember, Berbers don't get Halberdier. So you're stuck on Pikemen. <laughs> God, the Cataphracts still impress me. Like, if he had one more castle producing, I think Blue would have been able to win that fight. But, you know, you're stuck on one unit. It's producing awfully slow here, Blue. Are you going to realize how slow, how how much longer this is taking you because of the lack of production? Here's my thing, though. It's going to take Red so long to take out this castle because of its HP. So if Red has to build up to another, like, 90 army to feel confidence, then Blue will have time to build up <clears throat> to, like, 30 or 40 more cataphracts. Oh, I liked what he did with the cataphracts there because he killed quite a few villagers with the side cataphracts. That was good. Uh-oh. Don't tell me Blue's thinking about other forms of military. If he makes anything else, Red is so dead. It's not even close. Because he's clicking pikemen and arson. Okay. Now the Trebs will have the hill, which will be nice. Guys, you don't have to keep plugging my merch, okay? It's not even one person. It's like multiple people just randomly plugging my merch. Uh-oh, there's a barracks from blue. That's a bad sign. Red needs to push fast. Red needs to push fast before this gets out of hand. Blue sees that. Blue. I don't think blue looks at anything else. I think blue's only looking here. What will blue do with the cataphracts? It's an uphill fight. I think this could still be really bad for Blue. We know the Cataphracts are strong. But he pulls back to the castle. This also means Red doesn't have the hill now. So this is a lot better of an engagement. Oh man. It's actually so close. These Trebs are also firing on Red's Trebs. Now Red pulls back. Well, now Blue takes the Trebs. Blue's in a good spot. Blue take the Trebs. He's going to take one. He's going to take two... And then you just save what you can and get back to your castle, I think. Yep. Now, here's the problem for Red. First off, I said it so many times over the last couple of years. Do not trickle trip. If you're going to push a very important position and you're going to surprise your opponent, obviously they're going to want to take those trebs out. You want to make sure you left having taken out that castle. So go in with four trebs minimum. That's my advice. I've said it too many times. You guys know. Um... But now we have production from a castle. We have production from not one, but two barracks. So 
I think, unless red makes more camel archers, which red is not, red is completely toast here. Red doesn't have the economy of blue. Blue somehow has 9,000 gold. Don't ask me how that's possible. The only thing blue doesn't have is any armor upgrades on the halves. But now the numbers are going to be even. I don't see how you could possibly win this, this upcoming fight. What is the most counterintuitive thing in AoE 2, you think? Like camels not having bonuses against cataphracts? That's true. Uh, th th I'm sure there's quite a few counterintuitive things or unintuitive things. Camels not having counter against cataphracts is definitely one. Um, I think Teutonic Knights? Or like uh, Bulgarian Swordsmen? Taking one damage from throwing Axemen feels very counterintuitive because normally throwing Axemen shred infantry, but it's because the infantry armor, or not the infantry armor, the melee armor is so ridiculously high for, uh, for the things I mentioned that they just do no damage. Okay. Anyways, production's there for blue. We'll see if blue actually wants to push. 108 army for red. So he's not messing around. Blue's slowly building up, though. Obviously very important. Okay, did you guys just hear that noise? I'm so sorry. You know what? Let me see what on earth. I think I could actually change that. That's happened so many times. Oh, God. Blue's pushing up the hill. That was probably a very loud notification on your end. And I'm going to see if I can get Hardy to remove that somehow. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. Blue's fighting up the hill. Red's still going to win, isn't he? Is he? Is he not? God, the value on the cataphracts is just insane. It's actually a very close fight. I'm so sorry, guys. That's not a, that's not a Windows notification about an update. I, if, I feel really bad about that. Anyways, 21 army versus 36 right now. And, hey, red went up to three trebs now. Blue fought uphill there. Ill-advised. Blue could maybe take more barracks. Yeah, the problem is I turn off system sounds, but the problem is I have to turn them back on when I use that PC to, like, test and listen to audio for YouTube videos. Then I forget to turn it back off. So that notification is... Annoying, I know. Uh, bear with me here one second. Oh, God. Red's coming in. Nope, nope, nope. We gotta watch this. Went to three trebs, but now he doesn't have the army, right? If he had the army there that whole time, the castle might have gone down. Still not a great... Not not a fun fight for Blue to be fighting uphill like this. But obviously, I think the cataphracts can take out the trebs. And, well... The castle's gonna stay up. That hoarding's upgrade, plus being Byzantines, has saved this castle. As over 4,000 HP has been taken off of it. Which would be enough for an Aztec castle, let's say. Or a standard castle, but... Look, almost 6,000 HP was taken off of it. Still not enough. And Blue's just gonna back away again! And Blue has gold. And a lot of it. Sorry, guys. One second. Trying to just fix this stuff. Yeah, that, that won't be an issue in the long term. Um, once the system's reworked. But yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. <sighs> Easy to forget something like that. <clears throat> I, I forget so many of these small little things. And then it comes up and I say, oh my god. Wow, that thing happened. What on earth was that? Okay, that should be fine. Well, castle is being repaired by one vill. Still only two barracks producing. And hey, good job from Red to switch the position. I'm actually very curious on what would happen if Red were to try and, like, ram through these houses or something. Like, what would Blue do? I think Blue would just react to it, honestly. Blue's got 16 Katas. Has 23 Halbs at the moment. Please, please, please make more production. I'm gonna scream. Don't... Don't get all upset. Calm down. He's just relaxed. He doesn't care. He's good. Two barracks is fine, man. 
Blue's got it all under control. 8,000 gold. This is part of the plan. Make the opponent think that they can win. I think that's the last gold that red will be able to take. Now we see red does have the three relics. We did see a two-hour game to start the day. So, it would be really interesting. <clears throat> We see another two-hour game. Not saying I want that, man. Not saying I want that. Also, ballistics, bodkin, chemistry, all these things are huge. Camels have been clicked around the house wall, not onto the house wall. And they'll be tracked down and killed. And now, bomber cannons for blue, who, which he's producing from here. And now we have the other unique tech, Kazba. Or uh, red, which just means the production from the castles is faster. Okay, this should be tracked, as we said. Cataphract should clear this. Blue will overchop this, though, which could lead to more raiding opportunities. Still stone there for Blue as well. Blue just casually repairing the castle. <laughs> just, just relax, man. <laughs> I respect it. I can understand why people get frustrated with it, though. I think if red were to send the light cav towards blue's base constantly, that's the way to win this game. Attacking the houses and running in, because then blue wouldn't have the things here. Blue would send the halbs all the way home, I think, or the cataphracts, just like we just saw there. That's the way you win. You have to stop avoiding the main army. Uh, sorry, you have to avoid the main army and stop giving blue the fight that blue is waiting for. Will red realize that? We'll see. Oh, looks like it. Okay, so... On the reverse side of things, if this happens to Blue, the best decision for Blue is to push with everything he's got and punish Red for not being at home. And then you try and put out all the fires, right? So obviously you push, and then you have to go chase. Did he see that? I think he spotted that. Hold on. Blue is attentive, all right. I think Blue spotted that, or he's just going to the gold. Oh, but there's an overchop, folks. There's an overchop. And the light cav are in. Yeah, blue notices. I don't think blue's going to know now is my time to push the hill. Like, that that would be a higher level player's decision making here. All right. So, no, red, don't leave. Red, don't leave. They're light cav. No one cares about their life. I mean, some people might. I'm sure their their parents do. But don't leave. Run into the eco, man. Oh, boy. All right, that's a problem. Oh, this is also a problem. Light cav over here. The bombard cannons, they're so important, and blue doesn't realize. Oh, geez. So the bombard cannons will die. Red's scared and is running away. That's a painful loss for both players, then. Again, probably the key difference here, though, is that somehow blue still has so much gold. And Blue's even going to drop a castle here and protect that gold. Now these cataphracts are just kind of defending the opening. But hey, these Light Cav make it around. This is more along the lines of what I was looking for. Light Cav are throwaway units. They don't cost gold. They're great at raiding. So maybe this will uh, this will make Red realize the situation here. Also, don't hesitate to attack houses. There's nothing wrong with attacking a house. It won't stay up for that long. Blue, though, comes in this way, and they're going to fight. Caddis might win this one. And Light Cav have killed some villagers here, and the Halbs have killed majority, as Red just calls the GG. Red just resigns. Red just says, you know what? I, I actually cannot kill this, and I'm so sick of you not killing me. <laughs> That's part of it. Like, I've been there, too, where I know I'm going to lose a game, but my opponent just won't kill me, and it's just so frustrating. <laughs> Uh, so Red, yeah, Red just resigns. Red didn't have to resign here. Red could have continued to play. He didn't take any damage, but he had no gold. And Blue basically played so defensive that his opponent could never realistically break him. I think it was possible, though. I think if Red had just gone in with the light cap into the farming eco, and then also went in with the light cap on this side, Blue would have brought everything into his own base, and that's an opportunity for Red to try and make the push in the castle. But man, was Mario a unique player. Right? Like, 1TC most of that game. Still ended up with more economy. Actually, he was one town center the whole game. Super defensive. 
but loved his cataphracts and loved his helps. Well played.